All right, let's take a look at this uh, second issue, the second problem uh, on the chapter 8 assignment. So um, we have these data points, and we want to um, do some different kind of forecasting. And uh, let's go, get, go ahead and get those entered in Excel. So let's just call it the month. And uh, we have just the 12 months. And as for the data, what do we have? Um, 83, 84, 85, 84. And the last four, um, 82, 83, 84, 83. Okay, so um, let's see what we need to do with this. So first we need to choose a time series plot uh, that's not too difficult in Excel. Um, we can just uh, go to the uh, data tab. So let me, maybe I can get this on the screen for you. It's a little too far out there. Um, so we want to go to the data tab. Uh, no, excuse me, insert. And we want to, so we want to highlight the data <coughs> and then insert. Normally what I like to do is just go to recommended charts and then all charts and then for this one um, we're going to pick this line graph. Uh, they have ones with points on it like this so we'll insert that one. Notice it starts at 80 so we can rule out a lot of the uh, faulty graphs by noting that. So we know this one starts at 80. Okay so they all actually start at 80. Um, ours has this flat point and goes up. Um, so does it start straight or with any kind of kink in it? Let's again look. So it starts out straight. So it's this one or this one. And then the only difference, uh, one noticeable difference is there's a flat little plateau here between 10 and 11. And there's not here. So uh, we don't have any plateau between 10 and 11. So that's going to uh, have us do option 3. And then this is a pretty horizontal pattern, I believe. No obvious trends, just kind of random ups and downs. Um, okay, so then we want to compare three month uh, moving average forecast with an exponential forecast. So the moving average is kind of similar to the naive approach except for what we do is, um, so let's uh, again create some of the same tabs we would. Um, let me just make this column bold for this row. Um, so what we want to do is we want to actually um, call this forecast and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the first three months to forecast and then in the fourth month what our prediction is going to be is it's going to be the uh, average of the three previous. So that's why we get a three month moving forecast. And uh, it'll give us kind of this funny error because it says we're not using all the data but that's actually intentional. And then we can just fill down and we get our uh, values. And then, uh, you know, as normal, what we want to do, let me get this chart out of the way since we're not really using it anymore. Um, we still are going to have a forecast error. And uh, this is just equal to uh, the data point minus the uh, forecast value. And then we just pull all of those down, fill down. Um, again, what are the other ones that are usually useful? Um, well, uh, let's, uh, they just ask for the MSE, the mean square error, I do believe. Yeah, just the, the mean square error. So what we want to do is uh, we just need to create the forecast square. So uh, forecast square error. Uh, what we're doing here.
and we fill that down. And then we just take the mean of that data. So we'll call this the MSE for this one. Um, I'll just write MSE for short. And it's going to be the average of the column that we just created. So there we go, 1.23456. So that's pretty easy to remember. So back to mind tap, the moving averages. Uh, they want three decimals, so 1.23. And then four, the next one's five, so it should be one, two, three, five. Um, now they want an exponential smoothing estimate. So what we want to do for that is, uh, let me open up a new sheet, but I'm going to just recopy our data. And uh, this uh, we get by actually using the data analysis. So you should see data analysis somewhere over here. If you do not, um, what you need to do is you just need to um, whoops. I'm just trying to pull this. No, nope, wrong one. Okay, sorry, up here. File. So I need to add the data analysis if it's not there. You go to options and then add ins. And then uh, manage Excel add ins is where you find this. So you click go and we do the analysis tool pack in the solver add in. And that will bring up a data analysis tab up here on the right, as you can see. So uh, we click this one, and we're doing the data analysis with uh, exponential smoothing. So we find that right there, exponential smoothing, hit OK. Um, our input range uh, is just the data points. Uh, no, the month is the input, and the data is going to be the output. So uh, we just want the month. Well, we can highlight the labels and we'll keep track of it. So labels, click the labels tab and we can include the top row when we highlight it. Uh, the damping factor, what that is, is that is the um, alpha. This alpha 0.2 is the smoothing or damping factor. So we're going to enter 0.2 there. And then the output range are the data values right here. And uh, that's all we need, I believe. So we click OK. Oh, we don't want to do that. So never mind the input range, and then the output range is where it's going to put this stuff. And what that is going to be is going to be our forecast. So let's highlight this as the input. Sorry, I forgot how this worked. And then we'll put the output range um, just right next to it. So we'll put the output range there and click OK. OK. Um, and again, we don't have a forecast for that first place. So we add the uh, forecast. And the forecast error. And again, we do this by just doing the uh, data point minus the forecast. And then we just fill down as before. And we get the forecast error. And then um, to do the MSC for the exponential smoothing, we just want to square the forecast error. And we need to fill that down. So we fill it down, and then the MSE is just uh, the average of the column that we created. Okay, so 1.801 when we uh, enter this in the mind tap. And then because um, the moving average MSE is lower, we're going to use that as the uh, better point. And what is the forecast for next month? Well, we're going to want to use the moving average. So um, we go back to the moving average sheet where we were doing it. And again, we can forecast this one by just computing the average of the last three months. Whoops.
or we can fill down one more since the average is already in there. Remember, it's the average of the three previous. So if we fill it down one more, we'll get that value, which is 83.33. So let's go back to mind tap and enter that. Two decimal places on this one, uh, even though the previous was three. So just keep that in mind. Let's check the work. Oh, oh so somehow we messed up the exponential smoothing. Um, let's go back and run that through again and see if maybe I started the input range at the wrong place. Um, so it was the sheet number three. So um, let's run the exponential smoothing one more time. Click OK. So the input range are these values. Damping factor. Let's change the output range so it's just right here and see if it does the trick. Click OK. We'll overwrite the existing data. Okay, and we get one more point. Let's see if we do the average of this one, if it helps. So all of these are working. Okay, so let's try the average of E3 to E13. I think it probably updated. Uh, Okay, folks, sorry, I got this figured out. The error on my part, so I've got it computed correctly here now. So the MSC on this one was 3.555. And what you have to do is you have to do the uh, data analysis, exponential smoothing. And then the thing I was getting wrong was I think I was entering a damping factor of 0.2. So uh, since they give an alpha level of 0.2, the damping factor corresponds to 1 minus alpha. So this... Uh, alpha value that they give in the problem of alpha equals 0.2. We do 1 minus that to get the damping factor of 0.8. So we enter 0.8 here. And then what you want to do is you want to take your data as the input range, and then you want to start the output range actually in this uh, next column. And it'll put it, because it, it, does, it doesn't forecast for the first month, just like uh, the naive approach. And then uh, you run it there, and then compute the forecast and the square forecast and the MSC in the same way. So uh, 3.555, and as you can see, when I came back and entered it in the moving average exponential smoothing, I got the correct value of 3.555, and it checked out. So hopefully this helps you with uh, the exponential smoothing and moving average forecasts. Thanks.